Hi guys, welcome to Tactic Devs. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at grouping data in a list view control. Now, I already have a WPF project set up, so without further delay, let's get to the coding. In my project, I added in a class called user, and this class contains three properties, name, country, and age. I also implemented a constructor that takes three parameters and assigns them to the three properties. Now I'll go to the main window.xaml file and I'm going to implement a simple UI. I'll add in a list view control and a combo box. So I'll add in a list view control, then I'll assign its name property to my list and I'll set its top margin to 50 pixels. Now, I'll go ahead and add in the combo box as well. I'll place it slightly above the list view control. Okay, so the function of this combo box is to allow us to select the property that we want to group by. So I'll assign its name property to group group by. Okay, now in my list view here, I'm going to set the view property to a grid view. And in the grid view, I'm going to add some grid view columns. Okay, so for the first grid view column, I'll set the header to name and the display member binding, I'll bind it to the name property. I'll add in two more grid view columns. and I'll bind them to the other properties. Okay, so here we have the grid view set up and the combo box. Now on the combo box, I'll set the selection index to zero. This means it will select the first item in the list and it prevents it from selecting an empty object. Now I'll go to the code behind. Now earlier on, I added in an array of users here and I gave it a name users. So I'll just expand that. I added in some instances of random users. So I'm going to bind my list. I'll bind the item source property to the user's array. And that should populate the list with some data. Okay, the app is running and we can see the list is populated. I'll go ahead and close it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and add some items to the combo box. And I'll do that by setting its item source property to an array of strings. Now I'm going to specify three strings in this array. So the first string will be set to none. And this item will be used to specify that we do not want to apply any grouping. Then I'll add country. And the third one will be set to edge. 
Now you can see I haven't specified name here because I do not want to group by name. Now the reason for that is because inside this list of users, all the names defined here are distinct. They are unique. So trying to group by name won't be of any use. Now I'm going to implement a grouping. I'll do that by getting the my list items property. And on the items property, there's another collection called group descriptions. So this collection allows us to add multiple group descriptions that specify how we want to group. Now we can add multiple group descriptions. Now the reason for that is sometimes you would want to segment a bunch of data into very specific groups. So you can add multiple groups in a, in a certain sequence. So for example, you can group by country, then from that country, you can group by age. So now here we are supposed to add an item, which is a group description. Now WPF has got a class, which is the property group description. We can get that from a namespace that is the system.component namespace. So I'll go ahead and add it at the top. System component model. Okay, now here I can add in a new property group description, property group description. And it takes in a parameter, which is a string. And that's basically the name of the property that you want to group by. So I can type in group by name or maybe by country, etc. Now I'll be getting rid of this line of code. Now I'm going to create a method that's going to create a new group description and assign it to the list view based on the selected item from the combo box. So I'll say public, it will return void and I'll give it a name group list. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'll clear any existing group descriptions. So I'll go my list items, then group descriptions. Now because this is a collection, it allows us to clear. So I'll clear all the existing group descriptions. Then I'll create a variable. I'll just give it a name property. And this will be equal to the selected item from the combo box. So I'll say group by then selected item. Then I'll cast it to a string. Now I'm going to implement an if statement that's going to check the value of this selected item. So I'll say property. If it's set to none, then exit this function, just return. Because it's returning a void, then it will just exit this function. Now, since we have already cleared any group descriptions, and if we exit the function at this point, that means we won't have any grouping. Now, if it's otherwise, if it's selected country or edge, I'm going to add a grouping to the my list items, then group descriptions, then I'll add a new property group description. And the string that I'm going to specify here is the same return string from the combo box. And that will determine the property that we are going to group by. Now I'll go to the main window. Now for this combo box, I would want to reapply the grouping every time the selection is changed. So I'm going to implement an event handler for the selection changed event. 
So in this event handler, when the selection is changed, I'll just call the group list function, which is going to clear the existing group descriptions and then it's going to apply a new description based on what is selected. Now at this stage, I would also want to add a group style. So a group style is basically going to determine the appearance of a label that is going to be applied to every group. So I'll do that here in the list view. So I'll say list view Then I'll say the group style. So list view. Then the group style. So I'm going to set the style for the group. I'll set it to a new group style. And then on the group style, I'm going to define the header template. So I'll say group style header template. Now in this header template, it's basically defining a data template. Now the data template is just going to describe the visual appearance of an individual group style, which is the label that's going to be placed on every group. So in this template, I'm going to, I'm going to use the label control And I'll bind the content of this label to a property called name. Now this name property, for example, if we group by country, it's going to return a number of groups based on the countries. So the name of those countries are what's going to be the name here being bound to the content. I'll set the background to a light shade of blue. So I'll say D0, D, B, F, F. Okay, then I'll set the foreground to a darker shade of blue, which is Nineteen seven one C two. I also do the same for the border brush. And I'll add some border thickness. I'll set it to one pixel. So basically what's happening, we are adding a label to the group style and the label will bind to the name of the group by whatever property is being grouped. Then it will be just having a blue background and basically yeah, that's it with a border around. Set the border thickness to one pixel. Okay. So we can, we can now test the application. Okay, so the app is up and running. I'll just go ahead and expand this window. So right now we do not have any grouping because it's set to none. So it basically clears the group descriptions and just, you know, renders it, renders the whole list. So I'll try to group by country. And we can see the group label that we defined in the group style is above every group. So here we have Brazil as the name, France, Italy, and India, Sweden. Now our group by age. Okay, so we have 21, 24, and it tells you the items that are in that group here. Okay, so that's it about grouping when it comes to dealing with a list view control. So remember to like, share, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. I'll see you in the next one.